Thank you for uh, inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here in this uh, beautiful city of Porto. Special thanks to Jerome and Klaas for giving me five minutes to prepare my presentation. <laughs> I'm standing here for Klaas, uh, and that's why he didn't come. Um, I, I'm an um, eye surgeon in, in Cape Town, also a beautiful city, also friendly people like the beautiful city of Porto. And I, um, I work um, in cataract and refractive surgery, laser, and um, uh, cornea. All right, so um, in this particular, this is called an uh, IPCL. It's a, a fake implant, and, and um, I've done uh, about 100 uh, of these cases. It can be used for my myopia, hyperopia, it can be used for uh, astigmatism, also for breast biopic, and for piggybacking after cataract surgery. The main features it's a foldable acrylic, uh, it, it uh, requires a more or less a 2.5 mm incision. The uh, nice thing about the um, fake implants is always a reversible procedure, and this is uh, very attractive for a lot of patients. And it's also, of course, um, um, uh, important to rather use in cases where LASIK is uh, contraindicated. Or in cases of severe dry eyes, it's, it's much better not to do the LASIK procedure, but rather the, the um, uh, fake implant. So this uh, uh, implant has, um, has uh, the, um, six holes. Um, and it has the, it's, it differs from the star um, aquaport type of uh, uh, IL where it's in the center. This is in the top part of the, the optic, and uh, in my experience, uh, there's less of a glare and halo problem with uh, these uh, lenses. It's also, you can see the um, angulation of the lens is, is very good. and um, He's got the rounded, three rounded pads, which gives excellent uh, uh, positioning in the eye, and also for the implantation. Um, also, the, um, uh, he's giving a very good vault because of the angulation uh, near the haptic. And also, the, he's got the holes in the, um, on the side where the angulation is, which is improving the, uh, the space between the, the lens uh, and the crystalline lens, uh, equalizing the pressures. Um, so, basically, the, the surgery is much the same as ICL, uh, using uh, Viscolon. Uh, to create space and is uh, placed in the temporal clear cornea through a uh, side incision. And uh, the lens is always placed in 180 degrees. Uh, also, in case of the toric, uh, the um, uh, toricity is, uh, is uh, customized to the patient, so you just place the lens in the uh, 0 to 180. There's some pictures, the uh, possible complications, of course, the pupillary block, cataract is very low, it's less than 2%, the itis, enophthalmitis. One of the problems is always the sizing, of course, so sometimes there's excessive fault or uh, too little fault. And uh, one obviously has to take care not to place the lens upside down. Um, the the main advantage, of course, is not removing uh, corneal tissue and not uh, uh, having problems with, uh, with uh, the dry light uh, that you get with laser. So, it's always important to, to check the um, pressures afterwards and to check the vault, to make sure that the vault, if you have too little vault, less than 250, there's a greater chance of having a uh, cat rate. And if the vault is excessive about above 750 microns, then you have a problem with uh, possible pressure rise. It's also uh, probably advisable to, in 
any case to the peripheral arachnotomy with laser. So, managing presbyopia, you can uh, also do monovision. You can do one eye with the presbyopic IPCL. This uh, company uh, produced the first uh, presbyopic IPCL in the world. And you can do you can do piggybacking for previous cataract surgery, but you can also do a, a presbyopic uh, piggybacking in cases uh, which is uh, very successful. This is what the lens uh, presbyopic IPCL looks like. It's produced by the K Group, uh, uh, based uh, in India. They also have a plant in the UK, and they operate under UK IPCL. <coughs> So you have various uh, uh, additions uh, uh, that you can use uh, um, depending on, on what you require for your patient. Ideal cases, of course, are previous uh, myopic patients who had laser 10, 20 years ago. These people are now, say, around 45, 47, and they now uh, don't like their uh, glasses, so you can uh, implant the lens in those cases. And the minimum required AC depth, of course, should be 280. <coughs> Just some of these. Uh, there you can see a uh, um, uh, picture of the, um, of the lens. Um, so, uh, just a few uh, case studies. Uh, this particular patient. Uh, uh, had very dry eyes, problems with contact lens wear. She was also uh, presbyopic, and um, so you know we had to choose either you do LASIK on her, you do PRK, or you do an IPCL on her. Those are your options in this particular case. Um, the corneas were, 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 were um, quite thin, so it was a risk to do uh, the LASIK. So we. And also, she liked the idea of uh, the reversibility of the lens of the procedure. And you can see the, um, the, the pentacam here. You can see that she's definitely at risk for ectasia um, uh, in case of lasik. So we chose to um, do the IPCL and uh, she's planning in the one eye and minus one in the other. And the patient was very happy. And um, uh, of course, uh, we do a contact lens trial before uh, always in these cases. And this was a patient who had a cataract surgery, who, um, um, and, but he, he came and he wanted to be without glasses. So, you know, the options we were looking at was cataract extraction and multifocal IFL or with a monofocal IFL. So we did the contact lens trial on him, um, and uh, we did a contact lens trial to establish one which would work, and so we decided to do a faker uh, on him, 60 years old patient, and aimed for 150, because he like only a distance for computer work. But uh, after the surgery, we get uh, an uh, induced astigmatism. So now we've got a problem. So what shall we do now? Should we do a PRK, unless we should do a lens exchange, or should we do a piggyback IOL? The patient uh, had really also unrealistic expectations. He had some dry eye. And um, really, uh, the patient would like to send to your opposition. He was a difficult customer. So we waited for a while, and um, um, We implanted a, um, rather implanted a toric IPCL because to do laser on the patient and he's not right, he's got dry eyes, problems, so we decided to do a, a toric IPCL on this patient. And he also liked the idea of the reversibility because he already had one uh, mishap. And he was very happy with this uh, decision and came out uh, 2020. In, what I then did was this eye, which was his other eye, was, was already minus 150. So I just said to him, let's make this eye planar. And uh, he used the other eye for reading, and he was happy, he was happy with that. Please, you have to conclude. Thank you. Well, we don't have to do the other cases, but uh, um, um, 
I think this is a, a very good option for um, uh, cases where um, LASIK, presbyopic LASIK, and all these other entities are uh, not uh, indicated. Thank you. Materials, uh, let's say, because I was having a concern about the materials and how long is your follow up with the lens? Yes. Uh, uh, the last question if you prefer to implant the multifocal um, the lens in the two implant system one lateral or bilateral? Um, you can do it by the left. I'm doing it uh, uh, the press bar with one, uh, one lateral. But you can do it by one lateral. Um, the company is the Care Group company. It's the third largest manufacturer of IOs in the world. And um, um, if you look at the um, um, the uh, ordinary cataract lenses, the acrylic lenses, they don't have any listings in its uh, its acrylic material, and it's uh, um, I can't give you uh, uh, you know all the information about the company. But I've actually visited the plant and it's a very uh, professional uh, centre. It's, it's, a, it's a lens which is customised for white to white or it gives a white to white and yes. you, you need to you need to uh, uh, measure the white to white. Yeah. So we measure it with the Galileo. And it, I must say the Galileo is pretty uh, accurate uh, for me. And I also Personally, the technicians measure it, and then I just check it with the caliper. I also check it uh, um, uh, at the slit lamp. But there's an electronic caliper which is actually a very good uh, uh, um, uh, instrument which I don't have, unfortunately. And it, it changes when you when you use the lens like a P bag in, in 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 another lens. The the white white the, the measure change. But the lens is larger than in a, in a normal uh, uh, when you have your, your, your lenses. Yes, you know what I do with with the, with the my, my my optic patients or previously my optic patients. I always choose a, a half a millimeter bigger. So if the white to white is twelve, I choose a twelve point five. But if the patient was previously hyperopic. I choose just the size of the, of, of the white to white. So it's quite important to look at that, uh, what the patient was before he had the surgery. 